Hello and welcome to the 2009 AAN Annual Meeting. My name is Jay McBride and I'll be the moderator for today's presentation. We'd like to welcome press here in attendance at the annual meeting as well as those by phone. Thank you and welcome. Today we welcome three members who will present the AAN's newest guidelines on women with epilepsy. We'll start today's presentation with Dr. Cynthia Harden, corresponding guideline author, followed by co-authors Dr. Gary Gronseth and Dr. Jennifer Hopp. Finally, we have a special guest, Mary Catherine Albritton, who will give us a patient perspective. After all of the panelists have finished their presentations, we'll take questions first by those in attendance in Seattle and then those from the, from, and then those on the phone, time permitting. Just a reminder that the guidelines are under embargo until 4 p.m. Eastern Time today, Monday, April 27, 2009. Everyone, welcome, Dr. Harden. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, we are really pleased to present the updated practice parameters on management issues for women with epilepsy um, that have a special focus on pregnancy issues. Um, this is newsworthy because it affects so many people. There are an estimated half a million women with epilepsy in the United States who are of childbearing potential. Um, another reason why this is newsworthy is that it is different than what has previously been done. This update is the first time that this topic has been looked at using the American Academy of Neurology methodology for um, developing uh, strong conclusions and recommendations for uh, practice management. This methodology involves looking at all of the evidence and synthesizing it to come up with our best conclusions and recommendations for managing women with epilepsy. And this has not been done previously, so this is the update. Um, further, uh, this update was prompted by a lot of new information that has emerged since the last update over the last 10 years. And this involves um, North American and international pregnancy registries that have uh, prospectively looked at the outcomes of women with epilepsy and their uh, during pregnancy and the outcomes of the pregnancies. And this involves primarily the North American Pregnancy Registry, uh, the European Pregnancy Registry, United Kingdom Pregnancy Registry, and the Australian. So in addition to the new methodology, there was a lot of new information um, coming out that makes this practice parameter uh, very timely uh, and actually very informative. So we're really excited about that. Um, I really would like to uh, thank my colleagues on the writing committee um, for putting this together. The American Academy of Neurology, invaluable uh, staff support, and also the Milken Family Foundation that supported some of the face-to-face -face meetings that we had um, so that we could complete this um, project in a timely manner. And now, may I borrow that piece of paper? where I'm asked to comment on one of the three papers specifically, which I'm really excited about because um, overall, what we found were some very reassuring things um, for physicians caring for women with epilepsy and for women with epilepsy who are planning to become pregnant. Because what we found is, counter to previous dogma, I think, uh, women with epilepsy are not at a substantially increased risk of um, having to have a C-section during their delivery, late pregnancy bleeding, or premature contractions or delivery. Also, the findings strongly support that um, if a woman is seizure-free for a period of time, nine months to one year, prior to becoming pregnant, it's very likely that she will continue to remain seizure-free um, throughout the pregnancy. So this is very reassuring information to uh, women and their physicians as they plan uh, going ahead with pregnancy. And I think that's about all of what I need to say right now, and I'd like to pass the um, microphone over to Dr. Gronseth. 
So the second uh, guideline concentrated on another very important issue for women with epilepsy. Um, oftentimes, of course, uh, patients with epilepsy need to be on medication, and the concern is, what will the medication do to the baby? And so we looked at uh, all of the evidence regarding the effect of anti-epileptic drugs on the potential for increasing the risk of birth de defects or uh, having a um, effect on the child's uh, cognitive functioning, their ability to think. And uh, what we found, uh, just to highlight a few of the things, uh, uh, high-level things, but well, one of the uh, most uh, uh, recurring themes was that uh, valproate uh, is uh, a medication that there is good evidence that it increases the risk of birth defects and additionally increases the risk of uh, having uh, the child's cognition affected, their thinking ability affected. And, and because of that, the recommendation is, if possible, to avoid, uh, avoid using Valparate. Uh, the other finding is if you have to take more than one drug, if a woman with epilepsy becomes pregnant and there are more than uh, one drug, that that uh, tends to uh, increase the risk of uh, the child having cognitive problems and also uh, birth defects. And then finally, the uh, drug phenobarbital and the drug phenytoin, I want to make sure I got that right, increase the risk. There's evidence that they increase the risk of uh, cognitive problems in uh, the uh, ch children with, uh, born to uh, mothers who uh, have epilepsy during uh, pregnancy who are on medications. Um, and then one of the other findings to emphasize is that uh, for a lot of the new anti-epileptic medications, although evidence is being gathered, there, there's not a lot of evidence to be able to tell us that um, uh, they're safe or, or harmful, although hopefully we'll have more evidence uh, for that in the future. So I'll focus on the third part of the guidelines, which uh, focuses on a couple of issues regarding newborns born to women with epilepsy. One of the first relates to the taking of folate, folic acid supplementation during pregnancy, the clinical impl implications of taking anticonvulsants uh, with regard to transfer of the anticonvulsants across the placenta and into breast milk. And thirdly, any changes in anticonvulsant levels during pregnancy uh, with regard to women with epilepsy. So what we found is that folate given in the preconception period to women with epilepsy um, may help decrease the risk of birth defects in women with epilepsy taking anti-epileptic drugs. In addition, it was found that the use of enzyme-inhibiting anti-epileptic drugs should not increase the risk of hemorrhage in newborns who get vitamin K intramuscularly at birth, uh, which um, may be advised by physicians. We also found that anticonvulsant drugs uh, are seen in the breast milk in varying levels. Um, particularly those uh, with regard to primidone and levetiracetam may be seen at significant levels in the breast milk, um, whereas others may not be seen at such high levels. And finally, um, and maybe most importantly with regard to clinical context, pregnancy it has been seen to, to decrease the levels of these anti-epileptic drugs in women with epilepsy taking certain anticonvulsants during pregnancy because we know that seizures may worsen if these levels drop to below 65% of the, the preconception level, um, this may be something um, that needs to be monitored. So uh, it has been thus recommended that all women of childbearing potential should take at least 0.4 milligrams of folate at a preconception um, through pregnancy who are taking anti-epileptic drugs. And in addition, because there's evidence that these anti-epileptic drug levels may change during pregnancy and this may lead to increased seizures, monitoring of these levels should be advised. And I'm here to speak on the patient perspective. Um, I have a three-year-old little girl and an 18-month-old little boy who are perfectly healthy. Um, fortunately, I was not on Valparade. I was on um, two other medications, cognitive, um, everything is on target. Everything's normal. I had a normal pregnancy. Um, I think I made the right decision with my children. Um, I turned out um, healthy afterwards, no negative side effects, uh, nor did it uh, affect my children. 
either.